Ladies and gentlemen, you welcome to this edition of the Prime Time Newscast on Equinox Television, live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, Douala. I am Babla Jonathan. In our top stories in this edition of the news, the President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Bia's statement at the Paris Peace Submit is interpreted as a public confession of an Anglophone assimilation attempt. The President of the Republic during that meeting in France said there was the possibility of integrating the minor the minority anglophone a part of the country into the majority french-speaking part of the country but he has chosen to offer the special status to the northwest and southwest regions of the republic of cameroon and sensitization on the special status for the northwest and southwest regions and other recommendations of the major national dialogue is gaining grounds in the northwest and southwest regions of the country the initiative has been uh, put in place by the prime minister chief dr joseph john Guti, ahead of implementation of resolutions of the national dialogue stadiums President of the Republic of Cameroon, Paul Beer, said during the Paris Peace Summit that there was the possibility of integrating the minority English-speaking part of the Republic of Cameroon into the French-speaking uh, part of the country, but he chose to offer a special status to the Northwest and Southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon. And this statement by the President of the Republic of Cameroon has been interpreted as an anglophone assimilation attempt confession by the president of the republic that is to say over the years that has been there has been an attempt to assimilate to absorb the anglophones into the french speaking majority part of the country an attempt which according to observers and critics has failed thus the, the special status which is today being given to the north West and southwest regions of the country. Some, however, argue the uh, fact that the special status is not being given by the President of the Republic as presented by many politicians, notably those of the ruling uh, class, but that it is something that was enshrined in the 1996 Constitution of the country, which was not respected by the person who is in charge of implementing and ensuring the respect of the Constitution, that is the President of the Republic, Professor Willie Brod Zingu spoke to me in the inside. Take a listen. It was a welcome international declaration, I mean, uh, by President Beer, uh, stating it in an international stage so that the entire uh, world should be able to recognize this public confession that there is a people uh, called Anglophones in Cameroon, or if you like, the Southern Cameroonians, whom have many for throughout of about 60, uh, 60 years that has been a genuine, I mean, interest to, to assimilate them. And, and, and let me say that this has been the subject of my over 22 years of research because we highlighted these tendencies of assimilation 22 years ago when we did a master's on the Anglophone problem in Cameroon, clearly highlighting, which was rejected severally. Uh, I, I think that even the president himself, when he was doing the declaration of summoning the major national dialogue, questioned the idea of marginalization of the Anglophones and came out to talk about the national dialogue. I, I think that the, 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 the announcement that there has been an attempt to assimilate these people, uh, which has not worked, and that is why they are coming up with the, with the, with this uh, special status. The, the, the revelation started even with the summoning of the major national dialogue because the president refused marginalization. And then he turned around to say, okay, we are giving a dialogue. For the very first time in the history of this country, a president spent more than 20 minutes highlighting a particular problem and trying to see how people can come together to talk an issue. What did you read within the lines of that? confession, or the so-called confession? Well, a sign of change. I do not see regrets, rather. I see change. Uh, change which is inevitable. 
because the change is not coming because there's a volition to do the change. The change is coming because the people have held tight to what they believe in. And that's what I said. Truth is a stubborn issue. And history is one of the most stubborn subjects that, that exist. Because whatever thing existed will remain. You can turn it inside out. One day it will come to the limelight. This was the truth. I think we have seen tons and tons of documents leading to that aspect of assimilation. Yes, the confession is waiting for change. Professor Willie Broad, Zingua, historian and political scientist, speaking to the inside, and I told you in the headlines that sensitization on the special status for the northwest and southwest regions of the Republic of Cameroon and other recommendations of the major national dialogue is gaining steam in the northwest and southwest regions, an initiative put in place by the Prime Minister Chief Dr. Joseph John Guti in order to hasten the move towards a return to normalcy and peace and of course the implementation of the recommendations of the national dialogue in the southwest region of the country the bishop of Manfe Andrew in Kia uh, said during the launching of the peace caravan uh, that if the mission leaders transform the peace caravan into a political maneuver it is going to be worse than the amber boys these are his words there is just a report these are the faces of the southwest region who represented the region at the major national dialogue in Yaoundi. These sons and daughters of the land, administrators and the clergy are now back into the region. But one of the strong forces who was also in Yaoundi is not here, but his picture. He is Mayor Kema Patrick Isunge, the mayor of the Buya Council. You know landlord of this premises was there. I mean, the Lord Mayor of Boya. Today he is no more, he's no longer with us. So, uh, like us, to raise and have a minute of silence for his memory. This come together is baptized post major national dialogue caravan for peace and southwest governor Bernardo Kalia Bilai through more light. So this speech of today for you and me son and daughter of this country to go back to meet your brothers and sisters to reassure them that you agree on many very important during the conference, Bishop Andrew Nkia, the Bishop of the Mount Diocese, paints the picture of things as of present. And every day I leave my house to do a journey, I say my last prayer because I'm not sure of returning. And even this morning, before I left my house, I gave very firm instructions in case I don't return. Luckily I arrived for you and I'm going to say another prayer before going back. This is the reality of our everyday lives, those of us who come from the peripheries. And summarizes the wish of the people. For how long can we continue like this? We are all tired. The man of God also indicated that if the peace caravan must succeed, politics must be absent. But in this circumstance, if we politicize this kind of activity, then we are worse than humble boys. <laughs> it means that what we are trying to help, we are in the same soup. And that was the worry of many here. If you search their minds, some of us are already humble. Because at the time we live here, we are telling them, don't mind the go ahead. The first thing is that for you to give somebody the medicine to go and cure madness, cure him of his own madness. Then, the one week time frame and the groundwork was another. We need more than a month or two 
I thought some work should have started in those areas, like trying to construct new hospitals in areas where they have been destroyed and schools, so much so that when you are coming to talk to the people, the people can give attention because they already see some work started already. The three years old crisis is an eye opener exhibiting in public that the elite of the region who claim to be the representative of their people have been proven wrong. They don't have the grip on a people they claim to be their representative. Bishop Andrew Kia stressed, pleading especially with elected officials to resign if they have been formatted by their own people who elected them. If that is the way, they want it for peace to come. The South West Regional Post Major National Dialogue Caravan has been launched at the level of the region and the result is now being awaited. They have one week to assess their stripes. The Rijato reporting there from the southwest region of Cameroon and the Peace Crusade was equally launched in the northwest region of Cap Bamenda over the weekend and participants expressed the wish to see the implementation of the recommendations of the major national dialogue as soon as possible. Mustela reports. Lives and thousands have been lost to the conflict which began as a street protest. The nation is bleeding in her two English-speaking regions. Reason why? A major national dialogue was convened by head of state Pobia to address the issues threatening living together in the country. Today, teams have been dispatched to the divisions and villages of the Northwest region at a time when those who dare go to their villages do so by sneaking in and out or under protection by elements of the defense forces. Seated here at the Minepad Hall in Bameda, delegates of the Northwest, putting suggestions together in order to win the population's confidence while on the field. I would beg that we start using other strategies. One of those, I think, is the seizure of violence 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 from all directions we are victims of violence from both directions the government has a tough job here to be the first to show the olive branch of the to these belligerent young people who are there, to show the olive branch and to act consistently to the olive branch. Government action should go first, not on paper but on practicals. Government actions should go ahead, so that when I go that I'm preaching peace, I should begin to point. You see. What you have done have started working. Look at what they are doing. I should be pointing. I should not go again empty handed. Or oh, we know just paperwork or oh, only voice. Hey, please let us do like that because they say no, that's how you people are saying it. Nobody is waiting for that now. Let the government, the government is us. Let us do <coughs> something so that those actions should go first before our words and all everything is coming. Despite the challenges, his eminent Cardinal Christian to me calls on the delegates to be resilient. At a point where to talk with this, our children, you have to go on your knees to tell them. Don't try to reason with them. Don't blame them, but let them know the truth. Where are we going to with violence? So when you are talking well with them, please be gentle in your language. 
during the launch of the major national dialogue caravan in Bamenda, Governor Adolf Lili Lafri calls on all to put hands on deck towards a return to normalcy in the region. The Archbishop Emeritus of the Douala Metropolitan Archdiocese is Lord Sheboy's Greece, Christian Cardinal Tumi, urging the Peace Crusaders in the northwest and southwest regions of the country to speak to the Amber Boys with a gentle uh, language and, of course, uh, to be humble and not to go blaming them or trying to reason with them. He was speaking during the launching of the Peace Crusade in the northwest region of the country and some of the Peace Crusaders are already on the ground in Kambe, uh, in the northwest region of the country. CBDM Section President Gala Gerard is leading the crusade. For me, I'm Strong Sander has more. The naming and commissioning of members of the regional and divisional caravan to sensitize and keep the dynamism of the major national dialogue among the people of the conflict hit regions attracted diverse reactions from Cameroonians. Why some Cameroonians question the mission of the delegate without the implementation of the resolutions of the major national dialogue. Others say the local population will resist the delegate chosen by the Prime Minister of the Republic of Cameroon. However, some villages in the northwest region are already being touched by the sensitization caravan in Tabiken village, Gambe Central Subdivision of the Donga Mountain Division in the northwest region. The people are listening to one of the delegates who doubles as son of the sword, Galajera. In the Limbom dialect, he told the people of Tabinken to embrace the peaceful path to resolving the Anglophone crisis. He says armed separatists are responsible for atrocities committed in Tabinken and should be resisted by the people. Speaking further, the elite says separatist collaborators have been identified and will soon be fished out of the village, and the people should desist from sympathizing with those he called armed bandits. Members of the sensitization caravan were named with a mission into the suburbs of the seven divisions in the northwest region of Cameroon and their field impact is yet to be felt in other parts of the region. And so these several parts of the two Anglophone regions of the Republic of Cameroon were dead, so to speak. Inhabitants of the town of Kumba, for example, deserted the streets. And of course, the public places were simply a void of uh, city uh, dwellers who stayed indoors as a result of the oppression ghost town imposed by pro-independence fighters in the two anglophone regions of the country uh, within the context of the deepening anglophone crisis that has badly affected development in those two regions and development authorities in the southwest region are now striving to ensure that the region is not further plunged into chronic on the development because of the crisis. Davidson Maimo reports. As Cameroonians continue to pray and hope for peace to return in the northwest and southwest regions, respectively, Dr. Ntui Ogok, General Manager of Soweda, says there is a need for the various government arms and actors of development to prepare for post conflict reconstruction. This is a raison d'etre of the Southwest Regional Development Forum organized by the Southwest Development Authority, Soweda. Dr. Ntui Ogok says they are hoping that the prevailing situation will improve for development actors and partners to carry on their activities with ease. I think, um, you know, that just like you mentioned, all the various stakeholders of rural development are really hungry to go to the field. And the, the greatest concern, the face or concern that they have is the security. The forum provided a platform for development actors to better strategize. If we have a forum like this, it gives us an opportunity to coordinate our activities, to know where, who is going where, who is doing what, and what approaches are we using? Are we using the same approaches? Can we, because we want to solve the same problem? The guest speaker, Professor Molua, in his presentation, called on other stakeholders to put hands on deck for the development in the Southwest region. There is just so much in the Southwest that we need uh, to better exploit for the benefit of our people, improve living standards, reduce poverty, and contribute to economic growth.
The forum, which aimed at evenly distributing development projects, brought together participants drawn from the different development sectors, including the civil society. The, life, the lifeless body of a 36-year-old lady has been discovered in the Komba Quarter, Dwala for a municipality, Sulemu, uh, Sulemuna Rosalie Law. The victim is said to have abandoned her family compound in Deido to stay alone in the Bonaberry before this macabre discovery. Details with Smanji Gangebrain. Report on the Makaba discovery in the Kumbakwata Bonaberi Dwala 4 uh, subdivision, the lifeless body of a 36 year old lady uh, found in her room, and she said to have abandoned her family residence in Daido to stay alone within because of some of her church activities. Uh, according to reports, the environment of her family compound was no longer conducive for her, so she had to move over to stay alone in Bonaberi before this uh, incident occurred, Manji Gangebre. Inhabitants of Kumba quarters in Bonaberry Dualafor subdivision. Everyone was out and couldn't breathe in air because of the pungent smell that was in the atmosphere. This was because a lady has died in their vicinity and was only discovered this Monday. This was also a surprise for me to realize that when my, my wife called me, I was 6.30, that they discovered a mother, mother dead in her bedroom. As I was wrong, she said that she doesn't even know what happened to her. She was alone inside the bedroom. One month before, she was sick. She was also interned in the dispensary at Le Grand Hill at Mission Catholic. She did two weeks there with her mother. When she released, she came back at home. Her mother asked her to go and live with her in there, but she refused. She said she cannot go with her. After that, she was also trying to do her business as usually she was doing. Friday morning, I saw her going back in the room with her bucket. I also greeted her, good morning sister, she said good morning brother. That was the last time that I saw a bad mother in life. 36-year-old Solemuna Rosalie Law was discovered in a prayer position already dead in her residence after she was lastly seen last Friday. Her father says the daughter abandoned the family residence in Deido three years ago and even accused him of having magical powers. It's been four years since she left my place at Deido due to activities of Pentecostal churches. During the three years she lived with me, it was prayers morning, afternoon and evening. She even called me a witch. At the time Equinox TV crew left Kombe quarters in Bonaberry, the decomposed body was still in the residence as inhabitants were waiting for security officials to take away the decomposed body. Dan can I die with this my girl die so me down die they horror me for heart. I show no fun. Despite efforts of health officials across the African continent, maternal and infant mortality rate remains high, especially in the sub-Saharan African region. And experts and stakeholders of the World Health Organization and other government officials across the continent are meeting here in the economic capital Douala to discuss solutions to that problem. Details with Immaculate Fogwe. The pain of childbirth has been described as equivalent to 20 bones fractured at a time. Experts say this is slightly greater than the limit of pain a human can endure. With the experience comes joy and the pain is quickly forgotten. But in many cases, especially in sub-Saharan African countries, the reverse is true. Death often falls on a mother or baby or both and a long nine-month wait ends in anguish. Sub-Saharan Africans suffer from the highest maternal and infant mortality rates 
in the world. In the African region, efforts have been made to reduce maternal mortality, child mortality, but uh, currently the, 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 the rate that we see in our region, in, the most, in most countries, the rate is higher than compared to other, other regions. In Cameroon, over four regions record the highest rates of maternal and infant mortality. After analyzing the situation of the country, of course there are regions where the rates are higher. And those regions which were identified to have higher rates were um, the far north, the northern region, the Adamawa and the east region. Meeting in Douala, Cameroon, World Health Organization experts and stakeholders from the Africa region are discussing efforts to enhance healthcare delivery in a bid to reduce maternal and infant mortality to the lowest rates. One of the, the, the key ingredients to improve maternal and child health is quality of care. So this group is also looking at how the, the care provided to women and children in health facility can be of high quality. And the quality of care is also an important element of the universal health coverage uh, movement. Uh, this is looking at how you improve the performance of the health, different building block of the health system, and so that uh, services can reach population, uh, services can be of high quality, but also uh, the demand of the population to reach those services can increase. Is the government of Cameroon doing more to reduce maternal mortality? The answer is yes. The World Health Organization country representative in Cameroon acknowledges efforts of the government through the national program to reduce maternal, newborn and child mortality. But observers say much is yet to be done by national health officials and governments of other sub-Saharan African countries. Talking Points is up next. Thanks for staying with us in Talking Points. We are receiving a historian and member of the civil society in Cameroon Gilbert Gimdo. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Babina. Thank you once more for being here. Right. Uh, sensitization campaigns, notably on the spatial status and other recommendations of the major national uh, dialogue intended to restore peace and normals in the two anglophone regions of the country, Afghanistan, in the northwest and southwest uh, uh, regions. Uh, first of all, your take on the spatial status recommendation of the national dialogue, a spatial status for the northwest and southwest regions of the country as enshrined in the, country, in the country's constitution. What's your take on this? Uh, thank you. you. We know very well that uh, I think you permit me, first of all, uh, take a retrospect of the national dialogue which uh, uh, Cameroonians so much waited for it, but it came and passed during which uh, for the first time I have never seen a country in the world where dialogue between conflicting camps go ahead when the military and the independentists are still fighting without a ceasefire being declared by the government and that questioned government's credibility and government's uh, honesty in actually resolving the anglophone crisis in Cameroon. And uh, secondly, uh, the dialogue has come and passed, and uh, what we are so much belaboring on now is the issue of the special status that has been allocated as one of the resolutions of the national dialogue to the English Southwest and Northwest regions. Uh, the peace crusade that is led by men of God in the two regions is very much welcome. All of us Cameroonians without any exception want peace to return to those two regions. But the question here is what are they going to tell the people? Uh, I am not prophet I'm not prophesizing any failure, but every Cameroonian who is who can take a little hypothesis from on, on what is going on in the field now will have these simple questions to ask. Special status, what has been decided? This mission seems to, to be talk, ill time. Talking about what they will tell them, uh, the peace crusaders will tell 
the separatists and all the population of those two regions speaking in Bamenda during the launching of the uh, uh, peace crusade or the peace caravan uh, Christian Cardinal Tumi said don't reason with them don't blame them don't uh, be um, in fact go gently be gentle be humble with them uh, thank you but it, it looks like there are a lot of jokes attached to this issue of uh, efforts towards resolving the anglophone crisis a lot of jokes because do not reason with them do not uh, uh, blame them yes that is the point of view of a man of God who is going to the field with the Bible in the hand. But behind him there are people who have swords. Those people who have swords are politicians. I'm afraid it's a way to increasingly ridicule the image of that man who we so much, whom we so much respect in this country. I think it, it's, it's a way to ridicule the image of uh, Archbishop Kea which people so much, who so people so much respect in this country, because Camer the attitude of Cameroon politicians is no longer to be developed, to be belabored on. We know who they are. They began by saying, with who are we dialoguing? When the dialogue itself came, they boastfully said, we have given you the dialogue we wanted. So stop the violence. Uh, uh, let things be very clear, without mincing words. The Anglophone crisis needs concrete solutions, which if the root causes are not addressed, I wonder how we are going to get out of this thing. It looks like the government is still thinking that Anglophones took the courage to pick up arms against the government to try and see. There is no government in the world that will want to lose such a battle. There is no one government in the world that a section of a portion of its citizens will pick up arms against it and the government will simply fool its arms, just like the government, the, gov the Cameroon government is doing. But what they should realize is that Anglophones picked up arms because their backs were touching the wall. And nobody, even a sleeping person whose back touches the wall, cannot continue to see like that. So I think they understood the distance the struggle is going to take them. I am not, like I said, saying that praying for failure but what i want is that government should have put the resolutions from that of that dialogue on a scale balance and see the extent to which they can weigh on the anglophones to actually stop to bring them down to actually bring peace to their minds let the resolutions be feasible how do i mean by being feasible this mission looks like it is ill-timed ill-timed because the so-called, the so much brandishing special status, which people seem to, those who earlier refused any efforts from the President of the Republic, which uh, they were shocked to see that he has announced that, now boastfully say special status, as if special status is going to heal any wound. Special status can heal wound only when the content has been uh, 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 already, uh, outlined clearly outlined, and then there is a framework, a time frame with when it will be applied. Until then, I'm afraid, because I know very well, they will push those respectable men of God to preach peace and uh, cajole the people. Then, as usual, they will come behind with something that people will go mad again. Uh, it is you, just you, normal. You we said know the men of God are, are, are going ahead with Bibles in their hands. And other people are coming behind them with certs. With what swords. Kind of, what kind of cert? A political cert? Yes, uh, when, when uh, Archbishop Kea spoke in Boya, I so much admired what he said because he, it was like a loud sounding warning that he did that if politics, if this mission is politicized, if politicking comes into this mission, the outcome will be da more dangerous than it was intended. And that's exactly what it's going to be. There are some ill-fated Cameroonians of both expressions. Anglophone elite, the so-called Anglophone elite, who I, uh, first from the win, I want Cameroonians to realize that placing church leaders ahead, it's already a signal that maybe the government is realizing that Anglophone elite have lost their legitimacy of representation. 
they can no longer represent the people. That point is clear. Because there are people who are characterized by individualism, self-interest, and that has made them to lose their representation. Be those who were elected or those who are appointed, none of them is recognized again. And it should be known very clearly that those Amba boys, the thing they are going to talk to, did not take arms themselves. None of them even have the money to buy the guns they now hold. Those guns are coming from some people. I think they should, the government, if he actually, they actually want to resolve the crisis, he should trace the right direction. You cannot be seeing a game in the bush with a gun and you are shooting elsewhere. Shoot the game by tracing those who the Amber Boys are answerable to. Begin from the crusade from them. Sit them down. If whosoever in this country thinks that this crisis can subside, by bypassing those the independent fighters are answerable to, to go and quench the taste of the so-called restoration from the minds of the Amber Boys. Who are you referring oh, to? Sisiko Ayuktabe and the other Anglophone leaders? Ah, the Sisiko Ayuktabe, the, the different branches, the independent fighters. Those who are in the United are States. Adherent to various in, in factions. Europe and so on. Exactly, from the United States to Europe to South Africa and to everywhere. If the government wants to resolve this crisis, get the whole country off the mess, no longer Anglophones, because everybody now has tears flowing on the flats from all parts of the country. It is now evident from the beginning, some people run their mouths that Anglophones are an insignificant minority, a cube of sugar in water. They are now realizing that what hurts the finger hurts the whole body. And you cannot sleep when your finger is painful. They now are realizing. And I think that if they do not take proper measures by shooting at the game and catching the game itself, that game is not the Amber Boys. They are those they are answerable to. And I think if they continue in this mood, these men of God, they are simply going to tarnish their reputation or get them ridiculed in front of those children. What should they I, do? I pray what? for them that they go ahead well, but let politicians get their mouths shut. Those who sit in air conditioned offices in Yaoundé and elsewhere and preach that we have given them, we have given them, as if some people, some of them talk like the country has become a piece of land where a sales certificate has been handed to their hands. Let them know that the country belongs to everybody, not only some. And they should know that this crusade that the Prime Minister has taken the pains to send in the field will only materialize will only be feasible if they have actually released the content of the so brandishing special status that will convince the anglophone society that will convince those who picked up arms that will convince every anglophone not only those who pick up arms because they are representing people let's be clear about this those who are in the bushes are representing people and those they are representing cannot back from them it is very clear Every Anglophone who feels the pains of marginalization, the pains of assimilation, which the president confessed himself, so it is no longer an, a, a hidden issue, who feels all those pains should know that this content is going to preserve, maintain, and value our, and value our values that we inherited. We have a complex history which, if it is not understood, well diagnosed, we cannot go anywhere. Right. And Talking it is from that direction that the crisis can be resolved and nothing like brandishing things on sending people to the field without satisfactory diagnosis of the so-called special status. Talking to the, the peace crusaders in the northwest region, uh, his eminence Christian Cardinal Tumi said they should speak the truth to the separatists, to the Anglophones, they should speak the truth. But today, uh, there are truths and there is what uh, intellectuals like Dr. Nick Nguyen call half truths and government has its own truths politicians have their own civil society leaders have their own the population to have their own what is that truth that should be told that should be said to the anglophones thank you very much that truth is the historical part of it uh when i listened to professor zengwa my mentor of course my mentor uh, spoke 
Uh, he said history is a stubborn subject. I want to corroborate with him by, may, by saying this. History does not forgive. History does not forgive. And uh, justice in history has no appeal. When you're judged and sentenced, it is like that in history. That truth is revealing the reality of who an Anglophone, the resilience of a Southern Cameroonian, the resilience of Anglophone Cameroonians. If that resilience is not stated, is not actually preserved, then I'm, I'm afraid if the government thinks that, if the government or whosoever thinks that Anglophones can be uh, absorbed or swallowed or assimilated, whatever term it can be used, they ought to realize by now that it is a near impossibility. It is a near impossibility and measures should be taken honestly besides politicking. That problem is a political problem and it should be solved as such. And when a political problem has to be resolved, maneuvers around it can only aggravate it. That problem is supposed to be tabled to Parliament, especially as the resolutions of the major national dialogue, which we so much appreciated, spoke of that national dialogue, or spoke of that special status, I beg your pardon. They, it w they were supposed to pass it to Parliament as a bill so that the content be released, outlined, and then the framework be put in place, forwarded to the President, signed into law, and if constitution has to be modified to that effect, because without that, there is still no headway. Gilbert Ngindo, a member of the civil society in Cameroon and historian, thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us.